Ah, West London. How fortunate was I to blossom in your daylight. The beautiful council houses standing side by side like all shades of skin from black to white. Living in the shadow of financial might, where Westfield blocked our view of the sunlight. Where neighbours spoke Moroccan and Portuguese without getting tongue-tied like they would when speaking English, and we wouldn't have it any different. We never pronounce our T's here, and we're pretty proud that we don't. Our parents worked hard, harder in a day than Branson ever did, coming back with paint on their hands to help cook dinner for their kids. We were the foundation that the rich stood upon, relying on my dad's labour to build that house that they'd sell for millions. The lift broke down from time to time and we lived on the 20th floor, but we just walk up those flights of stairs because in every aspect of life, aside from money, we were poor. We were full of life, and I can't think of another place under God's sun where you'd find an Arab man telling his Jamaican neighbor to have a good one. Where the security guard of the building was Spanish because back then, London was still open. Where the family that lived below us was Kurdish, and whenever we see them in the lift, they'd have this big smile on. And we had to be careful where to walk at night because, hey, it's West London, but that was okay because we're all cut from the same thread. Just trying not to drown and make it out alive instead. Recession hits hard, and dad's out of the job. Now he's getting work wherever he can just to make a few bob. Rent is due, but there's not much we can do. Trying our hardest, but opportunities are far and few. Sound familiar? It should. Because this isn't just my story. It's the story of every West Londoner living in a block of flats that make up a tower. Although sometimes I thought that it wasn't the flats that made the tower stand. Rather, it was us the diverse, hard-working families of the lower class, working harder because we worked for our lives, not for luxury houses or flashy cars. This is clearly profits before people. It's Go unacceptable. Down, it's unacceptable. That's my people, that's our people, yeah? We're a community, they're a family, and they're burning to death. The tower was burning long before it set alight. If you see the charred building that looks like death, know that the ones around it are still burning, fumes consuming breath, the sprinklers hardly working in a building full of hard workers, dubbed the hardly working just because they are potential artists and writers working as builders. They died just like they lived, and that's no exaggeration. Suffocated and blocked in by the elite of the nation. As the world watches on almost helplessly and those who help less are those who own more. Sad to say, but it's the reality of both the poor and the almost poor. They begged for help, slamming on windows, so ironic because they've been slamming on the windows of the world for so long. Time passed and the building was burning ablaze with hundreds inside, fathers, mothers and children of all shades, burning in the negligence of a government that was warned, that turned their heads, caring about money more than the souls of the burned. The people who died and lost their homes, it, this happened to them because they are poor. We are in one of the richest spaces, not just in London, but in the world. Repeated requests were ignored. There is nowhere that rich people live in a building without adequate fire safety. Everyone I spoke to who was out there couldn't hear alarms. There was no sprinkler system. Grenfell Tower ablaze was perhaps the first time London's skyline pointed to our pain and suffering. The ignored backbone of London kind as their brothers and daughters looked on, hearing nothing but the screams of their loved ones suffocating, aflame both their bodies and their dreams. How sad is it? that this tower block needed to be aflame in order to be in the spotlight. Now in its place, some spot a burnt building, while others spot light. Because in all the pain, and all the ash, and in all the anguish and the wrath, we still know that they didn't die in that building, rather their souls ascended to the heavens, leaving their extended family, that is all of us, mourning and grieving, never forgetting why they were lost and why we're still living, because their loss of life shall be our beginning. We are sent from hospital to hospital to shelters. Why, why is there not a community house for family members? Why? Why do we have to go out there and look actively for them and then be told misled information? We want some to come official, and talk to you official public authorities to come here. That's what we need. And will you stay until you get that? Yes, of course. Yes. The media are scared to state just how many will be burying. And yes, councils are turning away or running away like me, but we the people have the power to make government sway. We demand justice, we demand answers, and we'll get them. The people that are responsible for this will get them. Because we, we are the people of our West London, the place that has given us so much joy and so much pain. But never any pain like this. After Grenfell Tower, for this country, Nothing will ever be the same. And we 
the hardest workers in the room, will make sure that justice will be served for Grenfell. Justice will be served for us all.